Welcome everybody once again to the grind. Um, I'm so happy to have you guys here. I did promise that we do another masterclass in two weeks. So here we are. Today's masterclass focuses on a mini guide on how to tender. Uh, this is basically from all the feedback I got from you guys. And a lot of you guys wanted to know how to actually go about doing tendering, how to submit documents, etc. So I thought I'd do a mini guide on how to do it. I'm Tara Norris and welcome back to my masterclass. Things to consider. So you have seen the tender, you've been invited to tender, you've downloaded the documents, you need to have some sort of considerations as you go through everything. Um, I always tell people to please read, read and more read. I know a lot of us don't like it, especially when there's 101 um, documents um, and you've got to go through everything. It's a bit daunting, but guys, trust me when I tell you this, please read the document beginning to end. It is for your benefit um, and you can then go through all the requirements and everything you need to do, the closing date, the opening date, briefings, site visits, etc., will all be tabled in the actual tender document. Also look at the technical requirements, the skills and experience. You need to understand, can your business actually um, handle that? Do you have the capability? Is it something that's in line with what you are trying to achieve? Also be very aware, what does it cost to do the tender? Now I'm not talking about the pricing you put in the tender document. I'm talking about the physical cost in the preparation of the document. So to your time, uh, the person that's assisting you, whether it's an admin person or a procurement person, the printing of the documents, um, the design of the documents in some instances, I know for pictures, etc. There's a whole host of design elements and copy and creative that goes into it. So just be aware of what the preparation cost for that bid is. Also, does it fit in line with your business and your business strategy? If you are in manufacturing, do you want to go in now tender for tech services? So you must always be cognizant of, is it in line with what your business, your business positioning is and strategy? Also, try to establish what the cost of that contract would be, high level. I mean, you can estimate it. The minute you've read through the document, you can get a fair um, idea of what sort of cost this, was, this is going to be and what sort of margins you can make. Also, understand your capacity. So look at your current contracts, your current clients, and check if you actually have capacity to actually take on another client before you even tender the, the before you even submit this tender. Be considerate of client engagement. So some clients uh, like you to tender. So for example, if you have your you have a current client and there's another tender going out, they most likely will invite you to their tender or inform you that the tender will be released. So just be cognizant of that. Um, sometimes we don't actually want to piss our current clients off. So we actually want to submit some tenders. And also subscribe to tender platforms that actually um, give you a notification of when tenders are out. That also helps you in most regards. Tender documentation. I know this is daunting um, and a lot of us hide away from it. But it's very important that we get this right because you will see in most tenders there's different phases phase one is generally the compliance phase with all the heavy documentation phase two um, could be the technical requirements phase three could be presentations so you must be very aware in most tender documents they actually scope out what the phases are and how many points are per phase and how you actually um, go through the process and what takes you from phase one to phase two to phase three. So please be aware of it. You will notice every time you read any tender document, whether it is from a private um, corporation or government, these are the kind of things that it will detail for you. So make sure that you've downloaded the correct documents. Now, in some instances, there are sites where some of the documents are missing or some of the documents are under general. So just be aware and always check 
So sometimes the documents are attached to the actual tender notification and sometimes they're at the top of the, the website page or in a folder that says general documents. So please be aware and also note it down when you go to the briefing session. Always ask, are these all the documents required in this tender or are there more? Some cases they are general documents like a non-disclosure that is at the beginning of the attendant notification bulletin or at the bottom or in a folder. So just be very aware of that. Ensure that you have the right person's details. So in all tender documents, you, there will be a contact person. And sometimes there's two contact persons, somebody to get in touch with from a technical perspective and then generally the procurement person. So please make sure you have those details. These are important guys because you want to go through the document, you might need clarification, you might need, you know, some, some question and answers, etc. And all procurement people generally compile these and send them out on a regular basis during the question and answer period. Also look at the tender notification. Make sure that you understand is the documents downloaded? Do I need to collect the documents? Do not forget that most briefing sessions, and I say most, are compulsory. So what happens is, is that you go into a briefing session and if you do not attend that session, you are then excluded from the tender. So please make sure. I know now with the COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of the briefing sessions are online, so you are you are invited and then you are sent the link to join the briefing session. So please be aware that that is in play and it's very important that you go to those briefing sessions. It's also very important that you read the document before the briefing session because you need to understand what your questions and answers will be around the document, around the specs, etc, etc. Also, the question and answer period is not unlimited. It generally closes a couple of days before submission. So please be aware of the date that all questions close because beyond that point, you will not be able to send through questions because what the procurement people do is that they collect all those questions and at a certain point in time, they close it off and they send those questions out to everybody. So everybody understands what has been asked and how it's been answered. So before you even decide to submit the tender, you've got to kind of suss out what the client expectations are. Sometimes it's very hard to assess from the actual document because either the scope of work or the requirements or the technical specifications are a bit confusing, but you've got to like go the extra mile and try to understand what the client expectations are. So what you need to assess, so it's very difficult to try and do this during a tender process because that is in generally not allowed. So you need to kind of gauge like who are the current contract holders, you know, if you can get inside like in industry information and trying to understand, you know, are, are they just following compliance by putting this out to tender? Were they um, the current incumbents? Um, not satisfactory, were there performance issues, etc. So if you can access that information, I'm saying legally access that information. What you don't ever want to do in the procurement world is anything illegal. Listen to me when I say this again, everything must be done legally. So like I said before, please read through the document before you go through to the briefing session. This will help facilitate your questions and answers. Also, don't be afraid, raise any questions you have. There's no such a thing as a stupid question. If you're unsure, ask. If you call and discuss questions over the phone, please do not forget to document this in, in your email after the phone call. Use that clarification period to your benefit. Make sure that you're also applying for a bid that is a serious bid and you're not just applying for the client to suss out their costing or if the client is trying to get new ideas. Guys, people do this. They put out tenders to just check the market or to look for new ideas. So just kind of be street savvy when it comes to business and just trying to suss out sort of what 
what is the actual purpose of the tender? Are they really looking for new ideas? Are they really looking to change providers? Or is it something else? So most clients generally want you to give them a creative contribution and new ideas, and they are looking to shake up their business. So that is great. Um, please note most documents as well will have site visits. So these are very important because a lot of information is given on those site visits and it's key. Some site visits are mandatory and some are not. If there is a site visit offered, whether it's mandatory or not, I strongly suggest you go because there's lots of information you can pick up on a site visit. What goes into a tender or bid? So there's a lot and I know it's very overwhelming for a lot of you, particularly small business owners um, that have limited staff and don't, don't have like admin people and procurement people and finance people. And you're sitting there with like one or two people and you're trying to do this yourself. It's very daunting. I get it. But if you systematically attack the, the, tender, the tender document in a particular way, you actually can work through it with the, with the, within the given timelines. So let's look at this. So what actually goes into this document? So you obviously look at the client and the client's needs. So what are they looking for? How can you solve their problems? Okay. You then look at creating solutions, ideas for them in line with the, the tender specifications. And these can be new ideas. They can be alternative ways of doing things. You then look at qualification process and documents. Always follow the documents, guys. If the documents have a specific process or way or checklist, always follow those documents. Do not deviate under any circumstances. If the document says do not un PDF and try to type in or only use a black pen, please listen to me when I say this. Only use a black pen. If it says initial every page, they're not just saying it for the hell of it, initial every single page. Highlight your value adds or, an, or innovation. So remember, clients are always looking for value for money. So you need to highlight stuff that the client can't do. You need to emphasize benefits, quality. You need to emphasize previous clients that are happy with your, your, your service delivery or your products. Then you need to understand and analyze all the costs and the pricing factors of this potential contract. Now, a lot of guys will send you the document with the pricing schedule in it. Yes, you have to fill out that document at the end, but you have to do the back end work to calculate all the costs and everything that goes into this contract before you then fill in the final numbers in the pricing schedule. So that is very important. Then contract management, you just need to obviously ensure that you have displayed how you work effectively and how flexible are you in terms of changes and, um, you know, contract failures, etc. You need to be very aware of that and you need to be able to demonstrate that. Managing risk, you obviously need to show them that you have thought through the process, you have thought through the legal risks, you've thought through the contract failures, etc. And lastly, showcase your team. So it's very important when you look at a tender document, most of the evaluation criteria is quite explicit. They call for CVs that are relevant. They call for a certain qualification or skills, level of experience. So you need to adhere to that um, criteria at all times. Okay. Tender bid submission documents. Now, I have listed on both sides the documents that are relevant for private companies as well as government departments or institutes. Now, please note my disclaimer up front is this is for South Africa. If you are doing business in other countries, if you're doing business in Angola, or Ghana or Mozambique, etc., you must be aware of the regulations in that country. You must be aware of the documentation that is required in that country. And 
you need to adhere to that at all times. It's very important. So if you are bidding for something, it is critical that you understand that country's framework in order for your bid to even make it pass round one. So it's important. So I've listed here the documents required for private companies. You know, um, they differ from organization to organization. It just depends on what their requirements are. And those are, very, those, those are very clearly stipulated in the actual tender. The tax certificate is very important for private companies, as well as your BE certificate. Um, any declarations, your CIPC registrations, your, your bid proposal, your agreement to terms and conditions. What you will find with private companies is that they generally send out their contract with their tender document so you can already start commenting on the clauses etc or agreeing to clauses um, as part of the bid process please be aware of that so you need to go through that it's not just a tick tick box exercise you need to go through all those legal t's and c's and agree or disagree on 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 those documents it's very important because you will find yourself um in a bit of a spot of trouble if you win the bid and then you don't agree to their terms and conditions. Then we talk about government documentation. This is very detailed and yes, it's confusing and yes, it's a lot of paperwork. But unfortunately, guys, if you are doing any tenders with government or any bids, you need to ensure that you complete these documents. I will say this again and again and again. Please complete these documents properly accurately so you will get thrown out for not circling we instead of i you will get thrown out for not initialing on a page you will get thrown out if you missed one space in an sbd document somewhere that someone forgot to add in that could cost you your tender submission so please be aware there's sbd one to nine that needs to be completed for every single submission. Sometimes the guys ask for some of these SPD documents. So just be aware, read the documents and make sure. Also in your clarification sessions, please double check with the procurement people that these are the required SPD documents. So it's very important that you get this right because if you do not get these right, you will not go past round one in any government tender process. So writing the tender bid and proposal. So this differs from commodity to commodity. So what do I mean? So if you're writing a proposal for a marketing service, it's very different from writing a proposal for a technology service, or if you are going to be supplying cement, or if you are going to supply fencing. So your proposals will differ from commodity to commodity. So please be aware of the type of proposal you need to do because they're not all the same. So very important, you need to still answer all the questions in the actual tender or bid document. As much as your proposal is going to be amazing and you're going to include all these items, please remember that you need to answer it in the context of the tender document. So what makes a comprehensive proposal? A very clear objective purpose, um, your company, company profile. I know some of your profiles are huge and massive. Guys, please condense them because a lot of uh, paperwork goes through to these guys. So try as far as possible to condense it and be clever about it. Obviously, project plans, roadmaps, which indicates how and when clients' aims can be achieved. Explain your benefits, your value adds, detail how services will be delivered, provide a timeline, demonstrate your team's capabilities, provide details on your project management and approach, your pricing details, identify potential problems and give solutions. And don't forget to provide a table of content that explains how the documents are organized according to the requirements. Now, 
I'm not saying that every single proposal will have all these elements, but these are the basic elements you should be covering. So once again, apply um, your logic. If you are selling a product, then your proposal will be slightly different than when you are selling a service. If you are selling a product and a service together, then your proposal will cater to that. So these are just high level, some of the stuff that needs to be in there. You can make it as detailed as possible, or you could make it very high level. Please also understand, if you're gonna go as detailed as possible, that also will impact the cost of this bid to your organization. Okay, tender delivery. This is my favorite because I've done so many tenders over the past couple of years, not only as a procurement professional where I actually stand at the procurement box and receive the tenders, but I've also consulted for a couple of clients where we actually physically speed down the highway to try and deliver our tenders on time. So I have seen both sides of this and it can be pretty ugly. On some days I've been at the tender boxes where people have been late and they've been begging for mercy just one minute late. So if your tender is late, guys, it is late. It will not be accepted. There are no deviations from time at all. So you either get your tender there on time or before the time. It will not be accepted after the closing time. So I've basically just put some stuff together. So your tender needs to be completed. It needs to be signed. You need to understand the correct, you must be sure about the correct address and the tender number. So a lot of the guys that, that um, put their tenders out are very explicit about how the tender needs to be delivered. So you need to be very aware of that. There's sometimes a two envelope process where you've got to put your cost in one envelope and your proposal uh, on the technical specifications in one envelope with the compliance documents. Sometimes there's three envelopes where it's the compliance documents, it's the tech pick, uh, technical specifications, as well as the cost. Sometimes it's one document. So you need to read that document and be 100% sure how you need to deliver this. Most cases you do an original, you do a copy and you do an electronic copy, which is on a USB. Sometimes you are requested to print nine copies or five copies. Once again, look at the tender documentation and understand the cost implications to your business when you decide to um, submit for this tender. So obviously if you are not in Cape Town and you're submitting a tender in Cape Town, you need to use a courier service. Please make sure that your timelines have been factored into using a courier service. A couple of tips on this is check, check and check again all documents. I will say that over and over again, you cannot, you cannot have any more checking. Sometimes I go through three or four people before we actually submit a document. Follow the envelope instructions. Those are critical. If for some reason, it is a three envelope system and you put everything in one envelope, you could quite easily be disqualified. So that's how serious it is. Um, if possible, and this is a tip that I tell a lot of my clients, please bind your submissions. This firstly prevents mishandling or your papers going missing, but also it helps with any fraudulent tampering of a tender. So if, you're, if, you're, if your tender submission is bound, then it's very difficult for somebody to rip out your BE certificate or your financials or whatever. Okay, double check the address and confirm with the person in charge of the tender. That's also important. Make sure you deliver your tender a day before. Now, I know we all are, 80% of us anyway, are last minute people. Um, and we are all rushing to deliver tenders at 1 minute to 12 on a Friday afternoon. If you can avoid it, please do. Because there's nothing worse than the feeling of arriving 30 seconds after 12 o'clock and you are late. So been there, done that, got the t-shirt. You do not want to be in that position ever. So please make sure that you can deliver your tender document either 
first thing in the morning on the day on the closing date or the day before if you are using a courier service make sure that they go a day before make sure they take an actual video or photograph of the submission as part of your arrangement with them because what i find is that they hand in your document at reception and it sits at reception it doesn't even go to the tender box so you must be very clear with your courier service that they are to take a picture of them putting your document into the tender box or they must take a video and submit that video as evidence to you okay track submission so once you have submitted your tender you are allowed to track the submission so you are allowed to do follow-ups to find out where they are in the process particularly if the timelines of the process were given in the tender document and now you are outside of this timeline so if they said in two weeks they'd be back get back to you or in three weeks they'd get back to you you are allowed to phone and just inquire be nice be professional to the people i always i always tell clients that um, and also i think the fact that you actually following up shows your commitment and eagerness for the tender um some cases you would be requested to do a presentation as part of phase two or round two so please be aware of that you need to be well prepared you need to understand your response backwards um, you need to make sure that your technology does not fail you on the day guys if you have a macbook you need to make sure you have an adapter because not all boardrooms of are welcoming to apple products or if you're going to some place else that your dow doesn't work or your lenovo doesn't work always try to just make sure that you have all the technology that's going to assist you on the day if you can get in to do a dry run great but 99 percent of the time we are not allowed in so just make sure that you have all your tech tech keep your tech person with you and all the technology to help you on the day and i always give people this piece of advice feel free to print print hard copies because sometimes it's just out of your control like nothing's working or you have load shedding or something goes wrong so always have a backup plan of printed copies that is very important be prepared for questions and answers because when you go through a presentation process there'll be clarification questions from the client so please be well prepared to answer those questions tender bid tips now there are a whole lot of bid tips that i could obviously give you but i've just put a few together just to ensure that you have some level of comfort when you're actually doing a tender process so provide all information as for the tender requirements i've said that over and over again it's very important if they ask you to do something in a specific way and you do not do it in that way it's most likely you will be disqualified make sure that all your calculations for your pricing is correct check check and double check this um, try not to misinterpret the scope of work if you are unsure about anything please ask so that's why the clarification period is so important if you do not understand the scope or if there's elements in the scope that are not clear you have the opportunity to actually ask those questions and clarify anything in that document sign an initial each document guys you can never go wrong like nobody's going to kill you for initialing every page please initial it please sign where you need to sign please attest where you need to attest etc don't forget to um, claim your hdi points if it's valid uh, please drop off the tender in the right box now some organizations sit in one place for example they could sit in pretoria but their tender box is in bedford view so you need to be aware don't assume because you know where the offices are that the tender box sits in the office i've had a few clients that have made this mistake where they go oh no 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 we know where the client is the client sits here and then on the day the driver realizes that the box is in another place please guys make sure that you get that right 
Otherwise, you will be late and then your, your tender will not be accepted. Also, when samples are requested, so sometimes um, samples are requested and they don't fit into the tender box. So you need to make alternative arrangements with the procurement people or the guys accepting the tender as to how these samples will be handled. Sometimes you go and physically hand them over to the procurement person and they sign for it. Sometimes they allow you to put it on the side of the tender box because it can't fit into the tender box. But all of that needs to be agreed up front. So there's no confusion on the actual day. If you do not get the tender or the bid, you have you, you have the, the, I won't say it's your right, but you have the ability to ask why, purely from a um, improvements perspective, because you'd want to know where you went wrong. So you could obviously improve your tender submission the next time around. I'm not saying that people give you the answers to this because 99% they don't, but some organizations do. And then that, in that instance, it will be very good for you to get that feedback because then you know you would not make that mistake going forward. Please make sure you, you're able to honor um, your offer in your bid in the event of it being successful. So that's why the costing is very important. Do not, under any circumstances, make any misrepresentation or false statements in your documentation. Um, remember, these documents, particularly the government ones, are enforceable by law. So please, please, guys, just be upfront, clear about what you're doing. If you are doing a JV, all of that information about the JV needs to be in there. Don't try and misrepresent yourself in any way. It is, it will never be in your benefit. And then obviously your services, your quality services and products will improve your track record and good standing with the department. Poor delivery creates negative impressions, not only for your business, but for small business in general. Now I put that in because I find a lot of businesses going for massive contracts and then getting the contracts and then failing to deliver on it. So guys, please, when you're assessing what you can or cannot do, I'm not saying go for the moon. Don't go for the moon. So go for the moon, you know, the sky's the limit, but also understand your capability. And if you're going into a bid process, you know, maybe it's a good idea to get partners to go into that process with. Maybe it's a good idea to form a consortium, you know, to get that contract. But don't take on business that you know you cannot handle because that not only destroys your organization, but it actually destroys the chances for many more organizations to come. Helpful checklists. So, what I've done is I've put a few checklists together just so you can have like an overall view of what you should have in your tender documents now these are not cast in stone and you can actually develop your own checklist so what what happens when you go through the tender document is that you can literally create your own checklist from all the specifications that are required from the tender document then you know what you need to add and when Sometimes some tender documents have a checklist in them already, which is great because that will guide you and then you know you're not leaving anything out. So a, a piece of advice, you either recreate that somewhere where you can tick, 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 and then tick the final one in the final document or create it on an Excel spreadsheet, etc. So you can just keep track of all the documents that you need to submit, what has been done, what hasn't been done, etc. So your basic tender list, use templates and formats provided. So that's everything that they've provided for you in the actual tender document. Please do not try to recreate tender documents. You could get into some hot water for that. So if they want you to write in the tender document, please write in the tender document because that is in itself a specification. Complete all relevant compliance documentation. So all in terms of government, all SBD documents are their compliance documents. In terms of private companies, they'll give you a list of compliance documents that they require. Please make sure they're there. 
please structure your tender document clearly. In some tenders, it is not clear how your document needs to be structured. So a word of advice is always ask. In the briefing session, always ask, how would you like this document to be structured? And then they will clarify that, and then that will be put into a document sent out after the briefing session. So you will have it in writing as well. Provide all relevant and up-to-date details. Please make sure that your certificates are up to date, that your tax certificate is relevant and not expired, that your BE certificate is not expired. Please make sure that all your documents are relevant. Address the selection criteria. So you'll note in the documents, there is what they call a selection criteria or evaluation criteria. So just make sure that your response addresses all those criteria. Always have an insight about your business. So like I said, it's your company profile. Try not to overpower people with the profile. Try and do a condensed version if you can. Um, you need to obviously assess your business capability. Can you deliver? Can you not deliver? You must make sure you're delivering the right tender outcomes according to the specs. Um, and then choose the correct referees and then proofread your tender. Guys, if you get five people to proofread it, the better, and then submit your tender on time. So these are the basic stuff. I mean, you can add in, you can delete, you know, you can do all sorts of things to just make this checklist workable for you and your business. But it's the basic checklist that, can, that you can just like abide by as you're going through the tender process. Another checklist I've put there is how to make your bid stand out. So I've seen tenders where people have just done Word documents and submitted. And I've seen tenders where people have gone full 360, lamination, cards, printing, you know, stuff to blow your mind. Um, you want to make your bid stand out. If you are submitting for um, a tender, and there's 30 of you, what are the chances that you're going to get the actual contract? Or even what are the chances of you being invited to round two? So one, make sure your compliance documentation is done correctly and submitted correctly according to the requirements in the document. That is most likely to get you through gate one. Then you get call for presentation. So now you need to stand out in the next round. So what does that look like? So obviously be clear on what your unique selling proposition is. This will allow you um, to stand out against your competitors. Your price. Price is not the only thing that people evaluate you on, but people are always wanting the best value for their money. So just be aware of that. Your product obviously you need to differentiate what you're offering and how to differentiate your product from your competitor's product. That's very important. Obviously, your place, your business location, your geographic range. Sometimes people want national footprint. They want global footprint. Um, obviously, locally sourced products. So you need to be aware of what your place is. Your people, having an experienced team is important. You want pe uh, people on board with um, experience and knowledge. And this comes through when you obviously have to submit your CVs as part of the evaluation criteria. A proven track record. What's very important is that you have reference letters from previous clients, sometimes over the last 12 months or last 24 months, um, around your, your performance, your track record. Um, their satisfaction with your services. You want to keep all of that. And then process and standards. So I know most of the guys don't really ask for your process and standards, but it's a very good thing to ask for in a tender because it shows the thought process around how you actually run your business. It also is very important when you have physical products because then we need to look at ISO accreditations. You know, um, those various standards, health and safety, etc. So it's very important that you have these processes documented in your business. And then obviously do a condensed version for the tender submission. And then lastly, we talk about the wow factor. So if you are the best and you're claiming to the, be the best, um, it's fine. It's not bragging. 
You can claim to be, be the best, but you must just make sure that you can back it up with evidence. So, and that is the end of our second masterclass. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, I hope you find the information that I have provided useful. Please let me know in the comments if you are looking to see something else in our masterclass series. The next one will be in the next two weeks. Don't forget to follow us on all our social platforms um, and go to our YouTube channel, subscribe and click the notifications. Um, and always, guys, um, just always remember to stay on that grind.